So in almost a week, Shavuot will be upon us. Now, a lot of Christians today have no idea what the word Shavuot means. And that the reason why they don't know what Shavuot means is because just like they have replaced every other holy thing, they replaced the name of Shavuot with Pentecost, which really means count 50 or just 50. 50, the word 50 is meaningless. It's Shavuot. The name has never changed. So, I um, started looking around and I was perusing through these uh Google about Pentecost and what, and they all talk about rapture on the Pentecost. What in the world do they talk? And those of you that have listened to my YouTube videos and my BitChute videos, you know I have proven to you that this rapture thing is a perversion of the actual regathering of Israel back to the Holy Land. The Christian, what they made up was that on this particular day, all the Christians would be raptured up into heaven and never come back while the world faced the Great Tribulation. I have over 600 videos, pushing close to 700 videos now, where I painstakingly point out that salvation is coming back to Israel because of the promises Yehovah, not the Lord, but Yehovah, get made to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. So, they're all trying to say the church, the church, the church. All right. But it's Shavuot. And what happened in Shavuot? Now, one of the things I want to point out is Shavuot is one of the appointed times. And uh, somewhere in here, um, maybe I have to backtrack a little bit here. Uh, pointed, um, you know, even even among Messianic and Christian groups, they recognize, and of course the Jews do. That's recognizes as these appointed feasts or appointed times. Now I want you to remember that word appointed. Now I'm not going to say that proves that. This event is going to happen on Shavuot. Not going to do that. But an event did occur on Shavuot, and I'll get to that in just a minute. So, in the Bible, Shavuot marked the wheat harvest in the land of Israel. In addition, rabbinic tradition teaches us that the date also marks the revelation of the Torah of Moshe. The day that the Torah was given to the people of Israel at the base of Mount Sinai. Okay? So try to remember all of that. Occurred on this date, uh, thir uh, 1312 BCE. Okay. Now, this particular event... Everybody says the church, the church, the church, and they don't realize that the 12 apostles were not sent to anyone with, except the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in one particular instance, when the Gentiles were opened up, that um, a Gentile by the name of Cornelius, I believe it was, was actually sent to Cephas. Who's Cephas? You Christians erroneously call him by a Gentile name, 
Peter. His name never was Peter, is not Peter, and never will be Peter. His name was Shimon Kephas. All right? Now, this never was Pentecost. It was always Shavuot. But here we are reading King James Version telling us it is Shavuot. Not telling us it is uh, Pentecost, I mean. I don't even know, I don't even think that uh, Strong's Concordance even has the word Shavuot in here. How sad. When the day of Shavuot was fully come, they were all in one, with one mind, in one place. Where were they? And who were they? Well, guess what? This passage shows exactly where they were and exactly who they were. And suddenly they came out of the sky, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house uh, of those that were sitting and then appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire. And it sat on each of them and they were all filled with the uh, Ruach Kodesh, and began to speak, to speak other languages. You, you see it right there. Other languages. We're not babbling. No, they were speaking other languages. As the Ruach gave them the capability. Now, who were these people? They were dwelling at Jerusalem. They were Jews. These were not Gentiles in this group. They were Jews. And why were they clearly had traveled from all the other nations under heaven to Jerusalem? But they were what? They were were Jews. You cannot make that say Gentiles. They were Jews. Now, when this was noised abroad, it doesn't say abroad. Okay, now, when... What is going on here? Hmm. Was a voice sounded, the multitude came together, and they were confounded. Because they heard every man heard them speak in his own language. So here we are, we had these people that were Jews that didn't even know how to speak Hebrew. They came to Jerusalem. And this event is going to occur once again, by the way. They're all going to come to Jerusalem from all far-flung Nations from all over the face of the earth. It's going to happen again. And unfortunately, Christians call it the rapture of the church, and what they don't realize it is the regathering of all Israel. The great promise mentioned in Deuteronomy 30. The great promise mentioned in Isaiah 60, 66. Jeremiah chapter 30, 31. Yol 2, Yol 3, Zechariah 14. 
Zechariah 9. So many that I can't even list them all off the top of my head. All talking about the regathering of the twelve tribes of Israel. Even Paul talked about it in Romans 11, 25 and 26. The salvation of Israel. When the time of the Gentiles ends. Ends with a bang. Okay. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all of these which speak Galilean? And how do we hear, how do we hear every man in his own tongue wherein we were born? They were born in Parthia, Persia, and uh, the land of the Medes, which is Parthia, Medes, and Persia is a land, land it's, it's Iran today. As well as in Mesopotamia, that would be Iraq, I believe, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia Minor, Fer, uh, Fergia, a region of Asia Minor, Pam Pamphylia, another province in Asia Minor, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Crete, Arabia, we hear them speak in our tongue and the wonderful work of Jehovah, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, What does this mean? And others mocked and said, These men are full of new wine. So I, apparently this noise, and then people came in to the temple to see what was going on. And then they saw what was going on. Okay. Now, not Peter. Not Peter. It is incorrect. His name, uh, as my uh, cousin pointed out, that Paul always called him Cephas. We'll look it up. Watch this. Hold on. I got, got my... Uh, Aramaic word kephas, which means rock or stone. Peter is not is not uh, an Aramaic is the oldest form of uh, Hebrew known today. Paul's parents did not give him a Greek name, Peter. And if you if you want to, you can go watch this. So, in right here, you got First Corinthians. Uh, oh, is Corinthians or Colossians? Uh, First Corinthians, I believe it is. Paul is using the name. Paul is using the name again. Paul using the name here, 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 and this one right here. Look. And he brought him unto not Jesus, but Yehoshua. And Yehoshua beheld him and said, You are Shimon, the son of Yonah. You shall be called Kephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So why are they calling him Peter? Flippantly misrepresenting the words of Yehoshua and even his name 
as we see right here, the name is not Jesus. It is not Eesos. It's not Joshua. It is Yehoshua. That is his name. The name must have the name of Jehovah the Abba in it. And also salvation must be in that name. Those two entities must be in that name or the name is fake and fraud. All right? So, Kephas. But Kephas, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice and said unto him, them, ye men of Judea. Huh? You men of Judea, who came in to see what all the noise was about, and all of you who dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you, and listen to my words, for these are not drunk. These men, who came from all around the world, these Jews are not drunk as you suppose. So the men of Judea and Jerusalem came in to see what all the noise was about, and even proselytes came in to see. Proselytes being Gentiles who converted to Judaism also came in to see what all the noise was about. You can read it carefully on your own. Be this known unto you, and listen to my words. For well, these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is only the third hour of the day. They didn't drink in the morning either. But this is what was spoken of by the prophet Yoel, not Joel. Yoel, or they, it's, it's Yoel. I don't know why they even have it pronunciation wrong on this one, but of course this will be the Greek anyway. It shall become to pass in the last day, says Jehovah, I will pour out my ruach upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my ruach, and they shall prophesy. Now, why didn't he just stop right there? Now, those of you who've been listening to my videos, you know that I have pointed aggressively at Haggai too. But, at the same time, Yehoshua said, No man knows the day nor the hour. However, however, in, I hope I didn't lose it, in Psalm, well, I may have. I may have to go look for it again. All right, we'll continue here. Um, in Psalm, David points out that Jehovah will have mercy on Israel on an appointed time, which we go back to, um, is it here, is it here, um, I type in is Shavuot an appointed time here, and um, then of course you'll see these little things what are appointed times as happens at a time that at the time that was decided in advance well we know that number one the Torah was given to Israel on Shavuot the Torah of Moshe is the Torah of Yehoshua going to get, be given to Israel on Shavuot? However, Kephas is insinuating that this event in Yol 2 is going to happen uh, possibly on Shavuot. Okay? Where he says, 
This is what was spoken by the prophet Yoel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said Jehovah, I will pour out my ruach upon the flesh, and upon your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams, etc. Right here in verse 19, I will show wonders in the sky above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire, and this is not correct not correct at all so we need to go to yo to verse 30 and I will show wonders in the sky and in the earth blood fire and Timara you see right there and look very carefully off to the right and you'll see palm like columns of smoke. All right, so we'll look at a nuclear explosion. And what do you see? Pick any picture you want. Okay, palm like column of smoke. All right, that's the closest one to it. Palm like column of smoke. That's a nuclear explosion. But what else do you see? Red above, red below. Let's continue to read. Wonders in the sky and in the earth. What wonders? Blood. The color of blood and fire. Palm-like column of smoke. What do we see here? Blood in the earth, blood in the sky, and palm-like column of smoke. That is what we see. I bet you your preacher never showed you this, has he? Now what happens? Is the church going to be raptured to heaven? Well, I'll prove to you right here and now it's not talking about the church, so to speak. And you're not going to be taken forever and ever up into the sky. The travel will be by sky, by flying ships, as it says in Isaiah 60 and verse 8. If you care to read it, flying ships, maybe we should go there, huh? Y'all think I'm joking? Prepare to have the... What just happened here? Okay. Eight. Isaiah 16, verse 8. Prepare to have your favorite narrative, false narrative, that your preacher teaches you dashed to pieces right before your very eyes. To fly. Okay. In the cloud. Like doves to their windows. They are waiting. Or the, the coastlands are going to have to wait. Or either that, they are waiting in the coastlands. One or the other. The ships of Tarshish first. Flying in the clouds in ships of Tarshish to bring your sons from afar. 
their silver and their gold with them unto Shem, Yehovah, Elohim, unto the Holy One of the uh, Israel. Because he has glorified Israel. The sons of strangers shall build up your walls, and their kings will be your servants. For in my wrath I smote you, but now in my favor I have mercy on you. This is talking about, there, therefore your gates shall be open continually, and they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles. So this is clearly speaking of Israel being brought in on flying ships. On what day? On the day that darkness covers the earth. Gross darkness. The Gentiles will come to Jerusalem's light because there's not going to be any light in their land. Why? We'll go back to Yol. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood facing the great and terrible day of not the Lord, but Jehovah, come. Listen carefully. For it shall come to pass. No, it doesn't say it shall come to pass. You see? See what King James Version did? Those who proclaim Shem Jehovah. Those who proclaim the name of the Lord will not be saved then. Those who proclaim Shem Jehovah shall be delivered to Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Delivered. That's going, where they're going to escape. They're going to be delivered to Mount Zion, Jeru and in Jerusalem to escape. That's where they're going to escape. As Jehovah has said in that generation who he will call in the last days. There goes your rapture narrative down the crapper where it belongs. Now, something else happened on Shavuot. Let me show you. And in the sixth month, what is the sixth month? Let's go to the Hebrew calendar and look which the sixth month is. The first month is Nisan. Second month is Er. The third month is Sivan. Tammuz is the fourth month. Av, or Av, the fifth month, and Elul on the sixth month. It is called the month of repentance, of mercy, of forgiveness. So, of course, Gabriel would show up to make an announcement to not Mary, but Miriam. was sent by Jehovah into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse of a man whose name was Yosef of the house of uh, David is probably how it should be pronounced. And the virgin's name was not Maria, not Mary, but Miriam. Those of you who are familiar with uh, Middle Eastern language, you know that that is correct. The messenger came into her and said, Rejoice! You are highly favored. Jehovah is with you. Blessed are you among women. And then she had said, when she saw him, she was agitated greatly at his saying. And considered what manner of Greeting this should be. And the messenger said unto her, Fear not, or don't run, because this is to put to flight to terrify to frighten. 
Miriam, for you are found you have found favor with Jehovah, not God. There is no nothing named God in the Hebrew language. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb, and you shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name not Jesus, not Jesus, not Joshua, but Yehoshua, and not Yesaus, but Yehoshua. It's never contracted to Joshua. All right? You shall call his name Yehoshua. He will be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And Jehovah Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his Abba David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. But you Gentiles, you don't believe that at all. Because you mingled your paganism so much with the truth, you water down the truth to where it does not exist in your curriculum or in your vocabulary at all now. And that is the reason why you have men claiming to be women and women claiming to be men. You see, you did that to the truth. And now, it's coming full circle to bite you right in the rear end. The perversion of the truth that you have done. Now, but it was on the sixth month. So let's start counting, shall we? The month of Elul is when she conceived now, can we all agree it takes nine months for a child to be given birth? Isn't that how long it takes? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're only going to, only going to count one ADAR. That's it, just one. So six, then we go back to the beginning. Seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, nine. The month of seven, and what high day, what appointed day is in the month of seven? There is only one, and it is Shavuot. The day that Israel's Redeemer was born. No, he was not born on December the 25th. No, he was not born in the fall or in the spring. You just had simple math laid out upon you. And that is it right here. So, Now, why am I talking, well, first of all, I need to be talking about this today, but as I have shown many of you over and over again, I do keep tabs, spy on, whatever you want to call it, my enemies, okay? What, what do I mean by that? Well... One of my enemies is Harold Turner, a former and possibly current um, three-letter agency operative for the U.S. federal government. Let me show you something. So, I'm not a member of his little thing. I don't give him any money. Updated 
12 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Covert Intel. Covert Intel. He always does that. U.S. government planning for total cellular outage. And all right. So let's look at all of these comments. These guys, folks in the comment section are crazy. But you will notice some of these things, some things that they're talking about here. Um, health freedom champion and um, courageous warrior Dr. Rashid Buttar has died following what appears to be a bioweapons attack targeting him in an effort to silence him and stop him from speaking the truth. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay. Maybe it's training to get uh, get times and let people know what to expect. I don't know, but we will find out. Um, but you go down here a little bit further, and we're going to see people talking about the rapture. Or, and you can see right here. Uh, have demonstrated to take out the satellites and Russia has openly wanted they will start with communications before acting whatever water shelter beans bullets band-aids comms practice 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 live it all right here we go right on time for the Pentecost rapture what are they talking about well Apparently, watch this, passing out, is it the State Department passing out? Oh, what is it now? Well, it's escaping me. There'll be a link in here somewhere. I'll find it. Uh, satellite phones, okay. I'll, I'll. Out. Satellite. Phones. And I'm wondering why just to the senators. To the Senate. Alright, here we go. CBS. Senators issued satellite phones offering demonstration on upgraded security devices. Amid growing concerns of security risk to members of Congress, more than 50 senators. Why not all of 100 senators? I'm always asking questions like that in my mind. Have been issued satellite phones for emergency communication. People familiar with the measures told CBS News. The devices are part of a series of new security measures being offered to senators by the Senate, Sergeant Arms, who took over shortly after the assault on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Why didn't they pass them out back then? See, there's a lot of questions here, you know. Okay, Department of Homeland Security Advisory says satellite phones are a tool for responding to and coordinating government services in case of man-made or natural disasters that wipe out communications. So, if they're passing out satellite phones to the senators, they are clearly preparing for an upcoming natural disaster or a man-made event that wipes out communication. Now, I don't need to go into all of these other um, uh, conspiracy theory websites or whatever you want to call them. You've got enough information right here. Right there. That's enough. Okay? And that is the reason why you got people going around and saying, Oh, this is, means the rapture is coming on, possibly on uh, Pentecost, as they say. Well, hopefully today you have learned the truth and have thrown away the 
false narrative of Christians. And I will part with one, maybe two scriptures. So we are going to go to Romans, the words of Paul, and he's speaking to the Romans in this particular chapter. Oh, Romans 11. Romans 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Who is you, the Romans? So I would not, brethren Romans, that you Romans should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you Romans should be wise in your own conceit. Partial, partial blindness happened to Israel until... It says the filling up of the Gentiles be coming. What does that mean? It's in Luke. All right. So we'll go look for it in Luke. We'll go look for it in Luke 21. I think. Uh, I gotta go to Strong's Concordance. Luke 21. Okay, so the destruction of Jerusalem occurred on 70, year 70 on the Roman calendar. This event is no longer going to take place. It has been done. Yet, Whole groups of Christianity believes that the destruction of Jerusalem is yet to come. It's because they listen to false preachers like Cyril and others. Jerusalem was compassed with armies. The emperor or the the emperor was um, the Caesar was Vespasian. And Titus was his son, the prince, as written in Daniel 9, the prince of the people that will come, will come and destroy the city. Well, that was Titus. Then there are which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and the mountains would be in the south. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not that the them in the rural areas enter back into Jerusalem. And what happened? Well, this... The event occurred on Passover, on Pishach. And all of the Jews came to Jerusalem, unfortunately. For these will be the days of vengeance. What were the days of vengeance on Jerusalem? On the Roman calendar, 70 A.D. That all which is written might be fulfilled. That fulfilling of the days of vengeance on Jerusalem occurred then on those days. Okay? And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all the Gentiles. Gentiles. And Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles is complete. Go back to Romans 11. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, or the time of the Gentiles is complete. What happens next? What happens next is, and so all Israel shall be saved. Because it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer who will turn away unrighteousness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins once again, and so all Israel shall be saved. All right, so after, after the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, or after the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled, this occurrence Happens just like we read in Yol 2 and just like we read in Acts, Acts 2, I believe it is. 
x2, alright? Okay, so let's go back, look at, so this happens to for Israel's sake. How do I know this? Watch carefully, or you'll miss it. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress upon the what? Gentiles. As opposed or as distinct from Israel. All Israel will be saved. It'll be the Gentiles' turn for the Great Tribulation. You see, Israel, Jerusalem, had their Great Tribulation on the Roman calendar of 70 A.D., but it is going to be the Gentiles' turn. But your preacher won't tell you that because the truth that you have just witnessed today will completely destroy the preacher's narrative of the rapture. Distress upon the Gentiles. We just read about the blood in the sky, blood on the earth, and palm-like columns of smoke. Who turns them loose? The Gentiles upon each other. The seas and the waves roaring. Well, apparently Russia has these what they call Poseidon system, which are a nuclear um, tsunami device. Shall we look it up? Putin could place deadly Poseidon torpedoes capable of causing nuclear tsunami in the Pacific. I said it was going to, I was going to end it with two scriptures, but I need to go one more. It would be Zechariah 14. This is the plague that Jehovah will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, the Romans, specifically but not excluding them. There were others who did it too. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. In that day, a great confusion, tumult, disquietness from Jehovah shall be among them, and they will lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. This is world war using nuclear weapons. And at that time, the Jews will be fighting at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the Gentiles, all the Goi, round about, will be gathered together, just like it is written in Isaiah 60. So you can believe the lies if you want to. But it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what I say. For Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob's sake, My servant Jacob sake. Uh, Isaiah forty five and verse four.
for my servant Jacob's sake, and Israel my elect, I have called you by your name, I have surnamed you, given you a title, though you have not known me. Jehovah, and there is nobody else, there is no Elohim besides me, I girded you, that you may know me from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none besides me, Jehovah, there is none else. Now, down here, but Israel shall be saved by Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded for a long, long time. In perpetuity. Now, you, if you want to wallow in the lies, in the false narratives, that is your choice. But today, I testify against you if you do. There is no excuse. You see, because I have no doctorate. I have no bachelor's degree. I am a poor man living in rural parts of the country. And I'm telling you this free of charge. I'm not charging anybody anything. Using a old laptop, the um, camera that's on the laptop, that's it. So, it's on you, if you don't know. My friends, every time I talk to them about, oh, it's time to go, time for me to go. I got to go, Henry, every single time. Well, when that time comes, they're going to start calling me and they start asking me questions. And I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I tried to tell you, but you didn't listen. I hope you're listening.